In this short video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert your audio files into MIDI inside FL Studio. It's a really simple and straightforward technique, but after I did my vocal tuning tutorial, loads of people were asking how to do this. So here you go. So inside FL Studio, I have a vocal loop and I also have a guitar loop. So I'm going to be showing it on both. And to make sure this works perfectly, you should have the audio loop. Then you should have a separate pattern. In this case, I've called it vocal MIDI, which is where the MIDI notes are going to be sent to. And you also want to make sure that you have a synthesizer or a keys plugin ready in the channel rack to send those notes to. So to do this is extremely straightforward. All you do is you select at the top left hand side of your audio sample. There's this little waveform icon. You click in there and you select edit sample or in the picker panel with audio selected, you can simply right click and select edit sample. Whichever of those two methods you use, it will pull open the Edison, which is FL Studio's inbuilt audio recorder and editor tool. It's an incredibly cool and powerful tool. I should make some more videos about it for sure. Now what you wanna do is go up to your pattern selector here and create a pattern or select the pattern you wanna send it to. In this case, I've called it vocal MIDI. And on the channel rack, I'm also gonna select the synth. So I've called it vocal synth, which is a patch of uh, serum, which is gonna be playing our melody. Now what you do is inside Edison, you select this spanner icon, and then you go to analysis, convert to score and dump to piano roll. So if you click that, it will do it. There is one other way to do this, which is clicking anywhere in the waveform, a right click, tools, convert to score and dump to piano roll. So either of those two, let's left click. As you can see, it's added the MIDI into the pattern here. So if I play the original audio. But in the same room, what if we fall way back to when? And I play the MIDI. Unfortunately, there'll be a small mistake in it, but we'll correct that in a moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is just open up the piano roll. I'm going to select all of it and I'm going to pitch it up an octave. And then I'm going to zoom in. What I like to do as well is to drag the pattern over the audio clip and zoom in and then you can really see in fine detail where all the words line up with the MIDI in case it's made any mistakes. So I'm going to just very quickly correct a few of these mistakes here. Room, what if we fall? But in the same room, what if we fall way back to when? I'm not a keys player, so if I just quickly hum in a melody or I play it on guitar, this will help figure it out and it can be just a way to keep moving quickly with your project. If you're already really good at figuring out melodies by ear, this probably won't help you that much, but for people like me who aren't that gifted, it's a real big help. I'm going to demonstrate the technique again on this guitar audio, so let's take a listen to it. So what I'm going to do is left click up in the corner on this little wave icon here. Then I'm going to select edit sample. Again, it opens up in the Edison. Again, I'm going to go to my pattern picker. I'm going to select guitar MIDI, or I'm going to create a new pattern. Then I'm going to open the channel rack and I'm going to select my guitar synth just here. I'm going to select the spanner icon or the little wrench icon. And then I'm going to go to analysis, convert to score and dump to piano roll. Just like that. So let's take a listen to the guitar. So it's done a really good job at the start. However, there's this note down here, which is a problem. So if I play the original audio, I just hit like an open string and the MIDI has interpreted that as this, which is clearly wrong. So sometimes you just have to zoom back in and uh, correct it. Again, a double note there that we didn't need. Let's go from the start and sort of blend these two together. And it kind of gives like sort of this lo-fi extra sort of weight behind the guitar. So that's really all there is to this technique. But unfortunately, if you want to do it on a loop that has, you know, more than just a melody in it, such as this. Where there's chords, melodies, bass lines, if you select edit an audio editor, and I'm just going to set this to output to the keys here. If I now convert this to a score, you'll hear that it just doesn't do a very good job at all. which is just terrible. So I'm really sorry this doesn't really work when you want to figure out whole chords, but for melodies, 
It's really great. The very last thing I wanted to show, which was uh, sort of a follow on from the pitch tutorial, was that if you've opened your loop in Newtone or pitch corrector, if you go to the edit tool, you should just be able to select copy to copy to MIDI clipboard or send to piano roll. And it should do the same as the Edison. The only difference here is that with the Edison, you can't change your pitches. Whereas if you do it in Newtone, you can correct all the little problems first and then send it to the piano roll if you find it easier to do it that way. But I know that not everyone has the new tone plugin, so the Edison is usually the best way to go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That's all there is in this tutorial. I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next one too. Bye for now.